Hello everybody, welcome to my first round World Cup predictions. I'll be making four of these, one for each quarter of the draw. And here's the third quarter. Again, I'll just get straight into it, have a look at all the teams and give my picks. Right, so first up we've got Sprinter versus Bud Tugley. Uh, yes, very, very clever. Right, <laughs> and so, so Sprinter's gone for the standard, the, pretty much the standard build that, that people have gone for here. Three, uh, three Blitzers, two Witch Elves, Runner, uh, two Rerolls and an Apple. Now Pete W, who is, you know, one an absolute legend with Dark Elves, he tends to go four Blitzers and an Assassin as well. Um, and no, no apothecary. And you know, I'm surprised people didn't, more people didn't go for that um, in in this format, to be honest. But the stacking means that you don't have to. You know, like in normal math, you've got to get your six normals. Whereas this, the fact that you can stack them on the positionals, it's not so important to do that. And the the extra reliability of the app is nice, isn't it? And yeah, you know, he's. I'm not so sure about the leader. I would have maybe he's got more dodge on, but. Yeah, it's, it's certainly fine having a, a Rodge Witch Elf and a Blodge Witch Elf, sure. And he is facing the Xbox coach. Uh, I can't remember what his... Gnome Slayer, that, that's his name on Xbox. Um, he's gone for Necro. Has he fitted all the positionals in? Yes, but he's only got two rerolls and 12 players. So that's, that's not bad. Maybe this should have been what everyone did. I don't know. Only two rerolls is dicey though, isn't it? Especially with overtime potentially. Um, just to show hands on the ghoul, three guard, mighty blow and tackle, no block at all on. Uh, oh yeah, that's what he normally the wolves. No block at all on his wolves. Really don't like that. I guess one's maybe he's going to go mighty blow piling on, but I would have started really with defensive skills on those. Um, yeah, I guess I guess my pick sprinter then. You know, dark elves are absolutely a fine team. The fresh golems will be a bit of an annoyance for them, and uh, you know, if if the wolves roll well, they'll be annoying. But he's got he's got some blodge, and uh, yeah, let's go for sprinter. Now we have Wolf Bainsons versus a Dant. Uh, Wolf Bainsons, you know, got a great record in Champs Ladder. He's got pretty much the best wood elf build, I think, with a wrestle lino. Uh, tackle strip leader uh, absolutely great build probably the best wood elf build possible and very good coach like me though he's got the unlucky draw of facing uh, dwarves in the first round however this dwarf player Adant who's a very good coach as well just quietly he's only got one runner so he's a bit susceptible to losing him from a lucky a lucky block or blitz and uh, being without the show hands then, three rerolls, three guards, so he's in two slayers. So he's, he's almost gone for the same build as uh, my opponent, Azagal. But, you know, in this one, see, now this is where I'm being objective and I'm saying I'm still going to back the Wood Elves, even though it's a poor matchup of Wood Elves. It's that in, in, in NAF style tournaments, the statistics say that the only matchup worse than 50% for Wood Elves is Dwarves. But it's still only forty nine percent that they win. <laughs> yeah, you know the Wood Elves still win forty nine percent against the worst matchup. So it's not that bad a matchup. It feels horrible, and it always feels like you're on the back foot and you're hoping to survive the carnage and you know try to get lucky. It feels like you've got to get lucky to win. But you know with leap and everything and movement, you've got the chance to get lucky. So uh, I'll I'll back Wolf Bainsons there. Now we have Danak versus Durun. Um, Danak has gone for the lesser spotted Amazons. Um, I like his build more than the other one that we've seen. He's gone for lots of fan factor here. Um, re four rerolls, Apple, 13 players. No, no rubbish positionals, basically. Uh, you know, the catcher's not very useful. Though they do get agility on normals, which you could maybe use with skill stacking, but probably not. You know, the sidestep probably not worth taking over, just more blodge or rodge. And the same with the three, you know, the throwers. You could squeeze out a leader, but there's no need. So he's thought about it. He's not going to use the catch and pass very much. So the fan factor got a good chance of two fame, and he's gone three guard, which I like, and a frenzy, which I'm not such a fan of. Uh, but 
Amazons are always can always be good. I, I, don't, I don't know what I would have picked for Amazons. I think only having four skills really limits them because they can't, you know, normally you'd go four guard and two block in a, in a NAF style thing. Here maybe you could go three guard and two block, but they just seem underpowered, especially as people can stack Tackle Mighty Blow and humans being so strong. He's up against Darun, and uh, Dar Darun has made a fundamental error here. He's got a killer on his team, and he's called it Durant, so he gets the glory. But really, the kill seems got to be calcium, hasn't it? Um, and the Mighty Blow Tackle is going to get some use, isn't it, against Zons? And, and again, you know, you never... Well, I say never. Probably never have to face a Mighty Blow Tackler in NAF style. And Amazons having to face that makes does make them weaker in this environment. A couple of Guard Blackhawks. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad, is it? The the strength fours are harder to deal with, so I, I don't mind having guard on them. But I think I would have started with guard on the blitzers just for the mobility against, particularly against wood elves. You want to have guard in your cage. Twelve players, three rerolls, apo. Uh, yeah, good team, and yeah, boy, boy, is he uh, he hasn't looked out because Amazon's are not an easy match, but he's he's lucky that he's got mighty blow tackle to deal with them, you know. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll back to run there. So now we have Tor 3005 versus the True Blue. I don't know who Tor is. He's only level 4, so I guess he's someone who mainly plays in leagues. He's gone for Chorfs. Now I guess he uses, mainly uses Chorfs in leagues because I don't think Chorfs are a great choice for this format. Only 11 players, only 2 rerolls. Apo, you know, he's gone with a Minot to get a bit of strength in. Um, stacking sure hands and Break Tackle on the bull makes him quite strong against Wood Elves. Um, but block on the other bull and only one guard. I, I just felt like, I really feel like Chorth just don't get enough in this format. I think they were a, a poor choice, and I think really the only reason to use them is because you use Chorths all the time. I think this was not the format for them. And funnily enough, I think it wasn't the format for Norse either. I, again, normally, not Norse are pretty strong in NAF style tournaments, but um, the, the boost that that humans get, I think, just invalidate Norse unless you take a Minotaur, a Minotaur, a Yeti, and try to get lucky with either, you know, Mighty Blow and Mighty Blow and Block on him, or Mighty Blow and piling on on him, or something. Um, and he hasn't gone with that. He's gone the more reliable route of thirteen players, two wolves, one with Block, a tackle Mighty Blow guy is, you know, frenzy. It makes him a hell of a killer against uh, light teams that you might face. Dodge on the runner, only two rerolls. Thirteen players in Napo. I don't know. I think this is a bit risky here from the True Blue. Um, I, I'm not really sure why he's done it. Um, I've been told that he plays humans. Uh, he's plays in Reb Rull. Um and yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like he maybe should have gone humans. But two, so really two teams that I don't like at all. <laughs> and I'm gonna go for the True Blue just because just because he plays in Reb Rull. So now we have Spartaco versus Al Bundy. Al Bundy, I believe, is Noamto on Twitch. Um, so you know, I, <laughs> it pains me. It pains me to 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 vote against Noamto here. But uh, you know, Spartaco, I think he was the best coach in the previous World Cup. Um, you know, some people may take offence at that, but there you go. <laughs> it's not disrespect to anyone else, is it? To, you, you know, bigging someone up, it's not. It's not bringing the others down. I just think, I just think he was. I think he's a very good coach. He has been ranked number one in the NAF before, uh, tabletop with Wood Elves. He's gone for nearly what I consider the best, except he hasn't gone for tackle. He's gone for frenzy. So I don't know if he's going to pair that with a juggernaut to have like a crazy surfing guy or. He just likes Frenzy. I mean, I've, I've tried Frenzy on dances before, so has Endzone. It's certainly good. Um, it's you know, it's not a way, it's not a dead skill. Tackle obviously has the potential to be a dead skill in a number of matchups. Frenzy's never dead. Um, against good coaches, it affects their positioning. Even though you're not going to let you know against bad coaches, you get loads of surfs. Against good coaches, you, you affect their positioning. Um, so yeah, he's he's gone two re rolls, no apo. But uh, yeah, the, the frenzy is an interesting choice, isn't it? Very interesting. But uh, I like it. So yeah, Al Bundy slash Noamto. I believe, I believe it's it's Noamto. He's gone for the exact team build I would have gone for in terms of players, well, positionals and rerolls in Apothecary. He's got for the three guard, the tackle, 
the kind of standard block. Um, it's someone else went for this exact build, in fact, didn't they? Block on the thrower as well. I really do like the block on the thrower as a as a bit of a non-standard choice. I, you know, I guess more guard would be more normal. You could uh, you could have stacked block guard on the ogre. You could have done. But this actually makes him quite resilient versus the the strip ball, doesn't it, from the woodies? Um, all of my, all of my previous predictions had Spartaco winning this one. I'm I'm kind of tempted to switch, but uh, just because humans are so strong, humans are so strong. But let let's keep the faith. I'll I'll go I'll go with Spartaco for this one. But uh, you know I wish Noam Dwal the best for sure. Now I've got Wenteros versus Chelsea Zola, and uh, <laughs> the luckiest team ever. If it is the luckiest team ever, he's going to win the World Cup for sure. <laughs> what else? You know, um, he's gone. Everyone's taken the same players. He has gone for the reroll and apothecary split rather than two rerolls. He's he's gone for the stacking of frenzy and tackle, which I'm not sure about because now he doesn't have the option to stack mighty blow and tackle. Or even Frenzy and Juggernaut. Not sure about that. I mean, it, maybe it does give him good first round matchups against some teams. Um, obviously, Strip and Leader on the others. He's got a great record, though, Winter Ross. And Chelsea Zoll has a great record, too. And funnily enough, he's also gone stacking. Um, again, he's gone the standard team that everyone goes with, players wise. He's gone two re rolls rather than an Apo. And he's got two tackles, so. Do you know what I actually quite like the I quite like the idea of, of of stacking the dancers because you don't gain that much from like a wrestle lineman or a block catcher. Whereas starting with a tackle stripper or a frenzy tackle, I, I can see the point of it actually. To be fair, I think maybe stacking on the strip guy is better than stacking on the mighty blow because I really like the option of mighty blow tackle, and having two tackle could be could be decisive in this game, couldn't it? So I'm going to give the edge there to Chelsea Zola. So next up we've got Crystal Hunter versus Yasmir. Um, now uh, this is interesting what, what he's done here. He's gone for the standard 12 players, 3 rerolls apo. Uh, block guard stacked on the ogre like that. You're not going to stack anything different. And and what he's by doing that he's allowed himself to go tackle a mighty blow guard and he's got his options open here hasn't he? I, I, I really like this. I, I really like this actually. For the second round, well, second round's a double, so he's probably going to take guard somewhere. But after that, if he plays somebody, he could he could stack tackle onto the mighty blow guy, or mighty blow onto the tackle guy, or guard on both, or piling on on the mighty blow guy. So I actually quite like that he's kept his options open by doing this. Um, now, obviously, the, the, the problem is he loses a guard for game one. But by taking guard on the ogre as well, it, it's kind of mitigated it. Most people have only taken three guard. And you know, there's a argu big argument for having tackle mighty blow on the same guy if you're going to take mighty blow so that you get to put down the elves that you blitz. But uh, yeah, in interesting build. I like it. Now, unluckily for Crystal Hunter, or luckily depending on you, he's not, he's not playing wood elves. Luckily he's not playing wood elves. Unluckily his tackle's wasted here. And uh, Yasmir's tackle mighty blow is not wasted. And a couple of guard to back it up. A troll. Three rerolls, Apo, only 11 players. So he's a little bit light on players. The Mighty Blow. He's got two Mighty Blow, as uh, Chris Lunder, but so has Yasmir with a troll. I quite like the troll as the roadblock. You know, he doesn't need to have a goblin for a one turn threat. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> the one turn threat is not necessary um, to have on the Orc team. I think having a strength five roadblock is, a, is you know, is a fine thing. The problem is it makes you even slower. Um, you know, which is bad against Wood Elves and what have you. Um, it's certainly not a bad Orc team at all. Um, and they're actually pretty close on guard. Do you know what? I think this could be an, I think this could be a bit of an upset. I think this could be an Orc win. I'm, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, you know, I think I think humans are super strong. But it's only three guard versus two. And he's match he's you know, he's because he's got the troll to match the ogre, um, that could maybe swing it. I'm I'm gonna go with Yasmir here. It's uh, nothing against Crystal Hunter again, you know. I'm just, I'm just. It's just what I feel. Right now we've got El Kalak versus Ever. Um, El Kalak has gone three guard and a block runner. I think this is exactly the same team that I'm playing against. Uh, you know, same build. Two two runners, two slayers, 
two blitzers guard on the blitzers to you know mobile against wood elves um yeah not much to say about it i like it you know it makes sense makes sense three rerolls you don't need the apothecary because you've got the reserve um a very sensible you know the, the two troll slayers i guess is is up for debate but it's a it's a sensible dwarf team now ever ever's humans do not outguard him they've got the same guard but the humans have more mighty blow two more mighty blow more strength more movement um, you know, he doesn't have the Apothecary. He's gone for 13 players rather than the Apothecary, which I'm not such a fan of. But, yeah, you know, I think I think really this format really does do a lot of favours for humans. So I'm going to back the humans to win this one. So, yeah, there's the predictions for the round. Honestly, a lot of these could go either way. A lot of them are really close uh, through either builds or skill or whatever. So, uh, yeah, a lot, lot lot of these could be wrong, I think. But uh, there you go, just... just just it's just a bit of fun so uh thanks for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic